Okay, today's lesson 6.3 is solving by elimination. Pardon the print quality. Um, my printer just decided to act crazy this morning. Um, but uh, for the most part, the problems that you're going to see will work. Just, you know, kind of bear with me there. The parts that you really need to copy down are going to be definitely visible. But like I said, just kind of uh, listen more than you read because I think your eyes will kind of go crazy if you try to read the stuff going on. Um, the main thing we need to know is, again, there's three ways to solve systems of equations. Last week, or in the last lesson, we learned about substitution, and we talked about solving by graphing also on your uh, work there. Today, what we're going to do is look at solving by elimination. Um, this is probably the most popular uh, version because most things are not set up for substitution. If you look at these three equations, if you can see them, uh, you have one that says 8x plus 3y equals 11. Another one says x equals 3y plus, well, I'm sorry, this system here, 8x plus 3y equals 11, 4x plus y equals 4. Another one, x equals 3y plus 1, 3x minus 4y equals 9. And the third one set up over here. Um, this is probably about the only one that we can set up because we have an x all by itself. And you're able to set it equal to that and go over here. Now the hard part about what's going to happen is that you have to be able to recognize when you can substitute because if you don't recognize when you can substitute then you're going to make a mistake so you have to keep remembering that substitution means you're looking for one variable all by itself equal to something else and that's setting it up there but again notice that there's only one system set up for that uh, the others would require something more suitable for how they're set up uh, in terms of what you're writing elimination is the process of creating opposites to eliminate a variable from a system again what we are going to do this was me thinking and said eliminate but creating, C-R-E-A-T-I-N-G, uh, elimination again is the process of creating opposites to eliminate a variable from a system. That's what we're doing. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use, again, I didn't fix this one up because a lot of the words on here are not important. Uh, we're going to use distributive property to create opposites. The essential question that people have is, you know, elimination does take a lot of steps. Why is it so complex? I'm going to kind of graze over this here and actually go back to my notes to read it. Uh, my notes online says that although you have not learned what elimination is, I'll admit it's a bit longer process, but don't confuse a long process for a complex process. There is nothing difficult about the process of elimination, but you do need to practice it in order to be sure that you perform the steps properly. So, properly. so if you look at this basic problem here, 3 plus 5 equals 8, uh, we know that to be true. What we can do here with this 3 plus 5 equals 8 is that we can, uh, hold on real quick, is that we can um, actually multiply everything here by 2. And if you multiply everything by 2, that turns into 6 plus 10 equals 16. And notice that 6 plus 10 is still 16, so that it's still true which means that if you take a problem like this and you multiply everything by 2, then it's still legal. We could also take our 6 plus 10 equals 16 and distribute a negative, which means we could take this 6 and make it negative. We could take this 10 and make it negative. We could take that 16 and make it negative, and our calculator would verify that negative 6 plus negative 10 is still negative 16, which means that it is still true. So. What this means is that you can pretty much use all that stuff to switch signs and multiply numbers because it works out and everything stays legal as long as you treat everything the same, as long as you multiply all numbers, switch all signs. And those two steps represent most of what you need to know in elimination. Again, they are not complex. You just have to uh, perform the right way. So the final step is the process of actually combining terms, which is where you eliminate things. So if you look at these two systems here, they are perfectly set up for elimination. And what I mean by that is this. If you look at this, you have 5x here, negative 5x here. We don't really care about those things there. Uh, the key thing about elimination is that your term should be lined up. Your x and y are going to be in standard form usually. So 5x, uh, 3y, 11. Notice that the x's are over each other. The y's are over each other. Equal signs lined up. Numbers lined up. That's how you know it's elimination. But what happens is if you were to add 5x and negative 5x, they cancel. 3y and 6y make 9y. Bring down your equal sign. 11 plus 7 makes 18. And notice that we can now divide by 9 
to get y equals 2 and again there is more work to do there but we're not worried about that right now I'm just trying to show you the general idea on how elimination finally works after you do the manipulation in this one you have 2x plus 8y equals 9 3x minus 8y equals 6 again yes my x's don't go away but notice that my y's are opposite so 2x and 3x make 5x negative 8y positive 8y cancel out bring down your equal sign 9 and 6 make 15 and whenever I solve this I end up with x equal to 3 and again there are more steps to this but that's not important right now I just want you to understand that after you set up your opposites all you honestly have to do is just combine your terms that's what it's called just combine your terms x with x y with y constant with constant and everything else takes care of itself so again notice how we used opposites to eliminate one term we just have to learn how to create them but again that's not as difficult as it seems uh, we're going to spend two lessons building up to elimination today what we're going to do is look at some of the easier problems but tomorrow we're going to look at the more realistic ones so your examples here are setting you up again on your homework you're going to see these types of problems so you want to make sure you copy these down for your notes first off you have 4x plus 2y equals 16 3x minus 2y equals 5 in elimination you have to use a little bit of common sense which means that if you you have to first off look and ask yourself are there already any opposites that's question number one are there opposites already and when I look at this question I do see a set of opposites which means make your life easy just add everything so 4x and 3x make 7x 2y and 2y cancel I wouldn't cross them out because you'll need it later and if you do cross them out I wouldn't cross them out to where you couldn't read it equals comes down 16 and 5 make 21 divide by 7 x is equal to 3 the reason I wouldn't go back and mess it up or wouldn't mess it up is because I have to go back to this equation and if you remember I have to use it to plug in my x so I put 3 in here so 4 parentheses 3 plus 2y equals 16 which means that 12 plus 2y equals 16 subtract your 12 2y equals 4 which means that y is 2 and again what you want to do to check that if I use this equation to get my answer plug it into your other one so 3 parentheses 3 minus 2 parentheses 2 notice it says 5 the answer I'm supposed to get is 5 which means that my answer is 3 comma 2 and that's what I'm going to do there so again not hard to do as long as it's set up like that this part here you've done before it's just going to be a little different than what you're used to it's not going to be as easy but again just make sure you understand how all that stuff works I said that your first question should be is anything set up for elimination and when you look at this next one the answer is no your second question should be is there anything that's close to being set up for elimination and in that answer the answer is yes because notice you have two y's that have a co coefficient of negative two so what we can do is we can rewrite the top and we can switch everything on the bottom so make your x negative make your two positive make your last two negative now we're gonna go ahead and add 3x minus x is 2x these two things go away 10 minus 2 is 8 dividing by 2 gives me x equals 4 again now you go back 3x minus 2y equals 10 turn your x into 4 so 3 times 4 minus 2y equals 10 12 minus 2y equals 10 subtract your 12 negative 2y equals negative 2 which means in the end that y is equal to 1 uh, when we do all that work but again check that out 4 for x I didn't use parentheses because there's nothing attached to it like I said if it was a number attached fine minus 2 parentheses 1 what did I do wrong there oh, 2 minuses but 4 minus 2 times 1 is 2 notice that it matches the number that we're supposed to have which tells me that my answer has to be 4 comma 1 so again that's what you're looking at so level 1 is where it's already set up for elimination level 2 is where you know it's pretty much set up for elimination level 3 out of 4 and again there are four levels about four levels 
actually five, but we'll talk about all that. But anyway, level three is whenever it's not set up for elimination, but it should be pretty easy to eliminate. So in this situation here, your X's aren't even close, your Y's aren't even close, so we have to do something a little more major. The good news is, um, because if I were you, I would focus on the X's, and actually your computer is set up to where you should focus on the X's, because if you try the Y's, it's not going to work. But what you want to do is you want to look at your X's and recognize that you need these two things to match first. And so in order to make a match, <clears throat> that means that I need this to have a 3 in front of it, so what I'm going to do is just multiply everything up there by 3, giving us 3x, 6y, and 36. Again, just check that out, 3, 6, 36, and then recopy the second one. Now that everything is close to being set up for elimination, what I can do is change the bottom row. So 3x, 6y, 36 on top, negative 3x, plus y, negative 1 on the bottom. Now that I have my opposites, my x's cancel out. 6y and y make 7y. 36 minus 1 makes 35. Divide by 7, getting my answer for y. Again, now you go back, rewrite one of your originals, now you change your y into 5, so x plus 2 parentheses 5 equals 12, x plus 10 equals 12, and x is equal to 2. Again, check that with your second equation there, so 3 parentheses two minus five equals one which is what it's supposed to be there so again main thing there is that you have to again where I said it's a lot of steps first we distributed then we had to switch the bottom row and I do recommend you switch the bottom row because that's how the uh, computer is set up to where you have to switch the bottom row but the main thing is you just have to keep rewriting the system as a system. The main, the mistake that people make is they try to take a shortcut and only rewrite the one that they multiplied. It only makes things worse. I recommend that you always keep everything in sets of twos. That way, until you eliminate it, everything is where it needs to be. Looking at another one. Actually, I think this is the last one. Um, again, you have 5x minus 2y, 14, x plus 3y, 13. Nothing's really ready to go. But if we could turn this bottom x into a 5x, then everything would work just fine. And so we're going to multiply this whole bottom row by 5. So rewrite the top, 5x minus 2y equals 14. On the bottom, 5x, 15y, and I think that's 65. You might want to use your calculator just to make sure. Yep. And again, not set up for elimination, but pretty close. So what we do now is rewrite the top equation and switch the bottom. So negative 5x minus 15y negative 65. From there 5x is cancel. That's negative 17y. Difference between 65 and 14 is 51 so that's negative 51. Uh, if you switch that around and divide you end up with y equals 3 taking that back to the top. And being careful, 5x minus 6 equals 14. Add your 6 to both sides, 5x is equal to 20. Divide by 5 and x is equal to 4. Again, checking that out with your other one, if x is equal to 4, then that's 4 plus 3 parentheses 3 which is 13. Notice it matches, which means I know I got it right. And there you go. By the way, on the other one, your answer would have been 2 comma 5. Because don't forget we want to put those in ordered pairs since that is what they represent, which is the location where both of those graphs cross each other. Alright. So, <clears throat> again, looking at that stuff, Yes, this is the process of elimination, but elimination is simply distribute to make your numbers match, switch the bottom row to make opposites, combine terms, solve using algebra, 
substitute and solve using algebra. So yes, it is a little bit longer of a process, but again, it's not nearly as bad as what it seems. I don't know everything that this is saying here, so again, I'm going to go to my computer and read it. Uh, it pretty much is talking about the fact that we are working with nice problems today. Uh, there are no negative x's or y's. There's only there's also an x that has no coefficient. Tomorrow we're going to look at things that have coefficients on both x terms. We're going to learn how to use the distributive property for that. So again, make sure you work hard on today because it's the foundation of what you need to know in order to do well on this week's material, which is the last uh, week of material for this semester. So again, do your best on it. Make sure you ask for help. Make sure you work like we did that one week where you were studying for the test because that's how you're supposed to work all the time. Other than that, like I said, go ahead and start your Math Excel and good luck.